Let's do a quick example on paper that illustrates the iterative learning process that expectation maximization gives us. All right, so I have drawn out here a feature space x0 by x1. I've drawn off a few samples, and clearly they really belong in uh, two separate clusters. And then I've also written out the, the uh, main five steps that we go through in order to do learning here. So let's go ahead and initialize our uh, clusters. And in this particular case, I'm just going to place the cluster means in arbitrary locations uh, rather, rather than using uh, a sampling type of an approach uh, to, to guessing those. And I'm gonna draw them as uh, ellipses. So here, I'll, I'll draw the first one in right here. And the other one, I'll, uh, I'll drop in uh, right in this region here. So, so those are intended to be this, the same uh, diameter. Um, by drawing uh, circles here, what I mean is that we don't have any covariance in this initial estimate. And the circles themselves, again, represent these ISO likelihood lines. So they, they give us a sense of the shape of the, the Gaussian. Okay, so so there we've we've guessed our model parameters. The the other thing that I'm not really going to track in this demonstration is the relative weights. We'll just assume that they're nominally equal to one another in this case, because these are uh, the same shape Gaussians, just with different uh, mean locations. This actually acts a lot like the soft boundary uh, classifiers that we've talked about. So so the nominal boundary where we switch membership from one uh, from one cluster to the other just sits really between these two clusters here. So, so in the purple cluster, we've got a set of points uh, down here that, uh, that are being assigned to it, and then there's a set of points up here. However, um, the points that are near this boundary, these are being they, they might belong in a majority sense to the purple cluster, but they also have uh, some weight that they're giving over to the green cluster. And then as we get further away from uh, the green cluster, so say these points here, their membership is going to be much more weighted toward the purple cluster. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and walk through uh, these steps. We've sort of talked about membership in the current state. Uh, we're not gonna worry about step three right now. Uh, so let's estimate where these new means and sigmas, uh, what those should be. Now for the purple cluster, really the dominant factor here is this set of points up here. And as we, again, as we get closer to this line, their, their weights are gonna be dropping. And, and then the weights over here are also uh, something uh, close to 0.5, and 0 0.5, 0 0.6, depending upon what that sigma is. So, so what that means is that this purple cluster is actually going to shift over, since it's being pulled by more points down in this area here, it's going to end up with uh, a mean that, that goes from here to say something um, more, uh, more about right in this location here, but it's also going to be uh, somewhat elongated to try and capture at least some of the points up here. So, so we're going to end up with a, with a cluster that say might, might look uh, something along these lines. Let me redraw that. We might end up with something along these lines here. Believe it or not, that's an ellipse. For the green cluster, 
these these points down here are certainly going to be pulling on the green clust cluster a little bit, but really the majority of the uh, of the pulling is going to be done by the the set of points that sort of sit in this vicinity right here. And and as we talked about before, these points here they're going to be pulling some on the green, but not with as much weight. So the green cluster itself is actually probably not going to move the the mean is not going to move all that much. It's going to end up probably uh, sitting, say, about right in here. And uh, and then its covariance, it's not going to be quite as elongated. It's certainly going to be tugged on by the points down here. Um, but uh, the, the it, it's probably going to sit, let's say, it's going to be something along these lines here. And actually, let me redraw that. It's going to be something that looks a bit like that. Okay, so let me erase those those old uh, centers there, and we'll also uh, erase that dividing line. So we've uh, computed our new our new uh, cluster parameters, and then we repeat with uh, step two, and and here we're computing our our membership again. So we're we're back up to this stage up here. Now, now figuring out exactly where the dividing line is between these two clusters is a little bit uh, a little bit more of a challenge because uh, they now are uh, they're no longer circles. But nominally, uh, this set of certainly this set of points within the green uh, region, this set of points really very much belongs to the green region. So we're going to have very heavy weighting toward that particular cluster. These points out here, they're really much closer to the center of the green cluster. So they're going to have a bit more ownership by, by the green cluster. Um, so, so, the, so these points up here will contribute largely to the green cluster. They'll contribute a little bit to the purple cluster, but they're now starting to switch over to being green. Likewise, this set of points here uh, that are that are sitting down in here, they're much closer to the purple uh, cluster than they are to the green cluster, and and so they're going to be contributing more to purple than than to green. So our our modified green, probably the the center is going to shift a little bit. It's going to probably shift to, to about right there, and. It, it's it's going to have a, a new shape that looks uh, probably about like this. So it's going to become a little bit more elongated and it's going to shift upwards. And then likewise, the purple, the, the dominant set of points is this set of points down here. So its mean really is going to be largely in the middle there with a tiny bit of pull by some of these other points. But uh, so, so we're probably looking at a mean now at this location here. Since the points up here are pulling less on uh, this cluster, there's going to be less of a, a pull to make this a really elongated Gaussian. And so we're going to end up with uh, something more along, uh, more along the lines uh, like this. So there's a little bit of elongation, but not as much. All right, so let me erase the, the old ellipses. And, and there we go. And let's also erase the old means. All right, so, so at this point, uh, there's just a little bit of cleanup that has to be done. We, we now have really uh, all of these points up here and, and certainly all of the points down in here and to some degree the points out in here are, are really very much owned by the, the green cluster. And, and so the purple cluster isn't going to uh, take much ownership there, and it's not going to be influenced by those points uh, very much. Likewise, for, for green, it's now going to be much more definitive about capturing these points here and, and up here. And, and so between the two, now green is probably going to elongate a bit more, and purple is going to shrink down. So let's draw that in. So green, the mean at this stage probably isn't changing, but we might have a little bit tighter of a, of a distribution. 
And then for purple, we're going to make that much tighter since now it's really just concerned with that set of points that's down there. Okay, so let's erase those old, old distributions. Oh, and the purple mean has now shifted a little bit too. Okay, so if, if we were to continue to repeat this process, these, uh, these distributions are not going to change all that much. And so this is an opportunity to actually do early uh, termination. All right, so, so that hopefully gives you a sense of uh, how this works from iteration to iteration. This works in higher dimensional spaces as well. Uh, and it also works with many more classes. Of course, as you get more classes, that means you have more parameters and we have more of a risk of overfitting the, the data set. And then as we get into more, those more, the larger dimensionality feature spaces, we do run the risk of that Euclidean distance metric not uh, being terribly meaningful. So that's also something else to watch out for. All right, so it's now time to uh, try out a little bit of code.